Welcome back to the last part of 7-4, complex fractions. These are fractions in fractions, which so much fun. Of course, there's factors involved. Go to page 387, do number 10. Take very good notes. There are two different methods to employ. They work anytime. Sometimes you want to use one over another one. For number 10, we have x over 6 minus x over 3 divided by x over 5 minus 7 over 10. So I notice that there's four different denominators and I kind of don't want to deal with them, so I'm just going to pretend to deal with just the numerator first. This is a 6 and this is a 3, so if I multiply this by 2 over 2, I'll get a common denominator. I'm going to get x minus 2x all over 6. This is x over 5 and this is 7 over 10. If I multiply this by 2 over 2, I'm going to get a common denominator down here. So 2x minus 7 all over 10. So I managed to get four different fractions, 2 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, to become two different fractions, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. I'm going to clear this up a little bit, though, because x minus 2x is just negative x. So negative x over 6 over 2x minus 7 over 10. All right. If you're dividing two fractions, that means you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So really what this is going to become is negative x over 6 times 10 over, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 2x minus 7. Now that I have a multiplication problem, I can simplify. Let's take 2 out of here. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 10 5 times. And I can multiply the numerator. And I can multiply the denominator. And look one more time to see if there's anything to be simple, simpl simplified, but it doesn't look like there is. So this is going to be my answer. So for your notes, sometimes when you get complex fractions, you want to deal with the numerator separately from the denominator. That way you can get one fraction on top, simplify, one fraction on the bottom, there's nothing to do. Then once you have a fraction up here, all right, you can't see that. Once you have a fraction up here and a fraction down there, let's multiply by the reciprocal of the one on the bottom. Go ahead and simplify if you can, put them together, one last check for simplification. All right, moving on to number 11. A little bit different. So instead of pretending that there's one type of fraction on the top and one type of fraction on the bottom, I'm going to do something to get rid of all of the denominators. Okay. Remember that you can't just cross out the 2 over x's because there is this minus here and this plus here. But what you can do is get a common denominator for everything. So I'm going to multiply this by x over x, and I'm going to multiply this by x over x. Now I'll put the two fractions together. Since I have an x in my denominator here, I have 2 minus 4x on top. Sorry, that's an x. I have an x in my denominator here. So I have 2 plus 3x on the bottom. Now that I have one fraction on top and one fraction on the bottom, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So the numerator goes first, and then I'll take the reciprocal of the denominator. Before, oh, let's put parentheses. Well, it looks like I can take these x's and cross them out. So now, these were 1's, these became 1's. I have 1 times 2 minus 4x over 1 times 2 plus 3x. Now because of that plus and the minus right there, I can't simplify the x's or the 2's. There's no GCF to take out of the top and the bottom, that's my answer. All right, so it was a little bit different. I realized that I could get the same denominator everywhere. So that's what I did. And then there's actually a shortcut that I'll show you in class. But you have these same two denominators, you flip this fraction, the bottom fraction, 
And it turns out that these just cancel out. And it really is just this over that as our answer. Again, check to see if anything simplifies, okay? Last but not least, this is gonna be, I'm gonna do it similar to number 11, but it can be done like number 10. We have three over x plus five, all over, two over x minus three, plus one over x plus five. Okay. This and this are the same, and that's the only one that's different. Now I could just get the same denominator down here and flip them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the same denominator at once because it's not that different. So, this is an x plus five, this is an x plus five, this is an x minus three. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I had a visitor, had to pause. Okay, we're at number 12. Three over x plus five, all over two over x minus three, plus one over x plus five. So, I wanna to try to get the same denominator everywhere. This has an x plus five, it doesn't have an x minus three. So I'm gonna multiply by x minus three, all over x minus three. This has an x minus, minus three, but it doesn't have an x plus five, so I'm gonna multiply by x plus five, all over x plus five. This has an x plus five, but it doesn't have an x minus three, so I'm gonna multiply by x minus three, all over x minus three. And now that I have the same denominators, I know I made the numerator more confusing, but it'll work out, trust me. Now that I have the same denominators, I'm going to go ahead and, actually I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't know if I feel like distributing it right now. Okay, I have three times the quantity of x minus three all over this very long denominator, all over two times the quantity x plus five. All right, sorry, had another visitor. I actually wanna go back here. I wrote two x plus five, I was wrong. I do want to distribute, so two times x and two times five plus, and then that's easy, I'm distributing the one, so there's nothing much there, because it's in the same numerator, so I'm gonna to have to combine like terms. And then my denominator is the same. I have an x plus five in both, and I have an x minus three in both. All right, so now that I did that, let's see what I got. I guess now I see it actually is kind of important for me to distribute that. I don't know why I didn't do it at the beginning, but no harm done. All over. Let's see, like terms. 2x and x is 3x. 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay, and it looks really convoluted, because it is, but we're going to take the first the top fraction in the numerator. We're gonna multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And then look what happens. This and this cancel out, this and this cancel out. So I'm left with three X minus nine on top and three x plus seven on the bottom. Even though I can just uh, factor out a three from the top, wouldn't do me any good because there's nothing to factor out of the denominator, so this ends up to be our answer. One more time, if I were you, I'd go back and revisit numbers 11 and 12, and then for practice, turn to page 389, and I want you to do number 39 and 41 only.